Hello everybody. In this video, we're going to be talking about sums over divisors of multiplicative functions. So in particular, we're going to be analyzing functions of the type g of n equals the sum over d which divide into n of f of d. So basically, our first, uh, what we want to show is that g is in fact also multiplicative. So again, remember that for a multiplicative function, we have that whenever x and y are co-prime, we have f of x, y equals f of x times f of y. So we want to show the same is true for g. So let's consider g of x times g of y. We're, we're just sort of going to do it uh, in, in this direction. So let's consider g of x times g of y. So we're going to have the sum uh, over d, and I'm going to put subscripts on these d's here. So d1 dividing x, f of d1, and then multiply by the sum over d2 dividing y, f of d2. And so whenever we have a product of two sums, it's going to become a double sum. But I'm just going to write it as a single, a single sigma with both conditions here. So really, these are two independent conditions. And so you would technically have a double sum where uh, one sum would be, let's say, you fix a d1 dividing x, and then you'd be summing over all the d2s dividing y. But it doesn't particularly matter. You can write it like this as well. So now we have uh, the product of the two terms, f of d1 times f of d2. Now we know that x and y are coprime, and we showed in the last video that when we have a divisor of x, right, it's going to have all the same prime factors, uh, give or take, you know, we could have uh, 3 dividing into 12, right? 3 doesn't have that factor of 2, but it technically has the prime power 2 to the 0, which is 1. But the important part is that since x and y are coprime, they share none of the same primes. And so if d1 is dividing into x, it's going to inherit its primes from x, and d2 is dividing into y, it's going to inherit its primes from y. So since x and y share no primes, d1 and d2 won't share any primes. In particular, that means d and y, d, d1, let me write this down, so uh, d1 and d2 are going to be coprime because x and y are coprime. And since d1 and d2 are coprime, we can use the fact that f is multiplicative. So now we have the sum d1 divides y, d2 divides, uh, I'm sorry, d1 divides x, d2 divides y, and now we can write f of d1 times d2 like that. Now we're almost done, right? We want to show that we can write this as the single sum d divides xy, f of d which of course is just the definition of g of x, y. And the argument here again uses the fact that x and y are coprime. Because if we consider the prime factorization, right, any divisor of x, y, since x and y shared no primes, we can basically write, right, x is p1, a1, dot, 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 pk, ak, like that. And then let's just say y is pk1, a to the k1, or a to the k plus 1, uh, and so on and so forth, until like pr, ar, right? So let's just say we, we, we write the primes in order like that. And again, none of these primes are the same. So when we multiply, we get a nice factorization, a prime factorization for x, y. And so now 
when we have a divisor of x, y, right, it's going to inherit its primes from this list. And we can break up that divisor at the pk mark, right? We can say, okay, part of the divisor here is going to have its primes from this list, which are just the primes of x, and then another part of d will have its primes from this list, which are just the primes from y. In other words, d is going to be a unique product of some divisor of x and some divisor of y. Because uh, each divisor of x and y will have its own unique prime factorization, which is, which is inherited from x or y. So in fact, this equality is valid, essentially using the fact that x and y are co-prime again. So it's important to note that um, right, this condition that x and y are, are co-prime is very important for these proofs, right? So we're saying that f is multiplicative, so we need this co-prime condition, and it's in fact important in these proofs. So now let's consider some examples of sums over divisors of multiplicative functions that we've seen. So we'll use the first example, the Euler totient function. Sorry, this should be sum of uh, phi of d. And essentially what we can do is since we're assigning a function to this sum, and we know phi is multiplicative, we automatically know that g is multiplicative. And what this allows us to do is, since we can break up a multiplicative function into its values on prime powers, then imagine that being like a basis for the vector space, right? All we have to do is analyze g on prime powers. Now, we can obviously first say that right, g of 1 is just going to be the sum of divisors of 1, which is just 1, is phi of 1, which is 1, right? And this is what we should expect for a multiplicative function. We should expect that g of 1 equals 1. But now let's consider just an arbitrary prime power, right? So we have the sum over divisors of pk, p to the k, uh, phi of d, and so obviously the divisors of p to the k are just going to be all the prime powers from 1 to p to the k. So this is going to be phi, to, phi of 1 plus phi of p plus dot 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 plus phi of p to the k. Now again, phi of 1 is just 1. And now for all of these, uh, phi of p, phi of some prime power right? We know that uh, phi of n is n times the product over primes that divide n of 1 minus 1 over p. So when we're dealing with a prime power, uh, let me just scoot this over here. When we're dealing with a prime power, the only prime that divides it is just going to be p. So we just have p to the r times 1 minus 1 over p. So all of these terms, right, are going to be 1 minus 1 over p times p plus dot 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 plus 1 minus 1 over p times p to the k. And now we might want to jump and factor out this 1 minus 1 over p and then uh, we would have a geometric series here and yada yada. But there's actually a better way to evaluate this um, without doing that. So let's just actually uh, expand, right? Or let's just multiply these prime powers in. So here we would get p minus 1, right? Because p times 1 is 1. Uh, I mean, p times 1 is p, and then p times 1 over p is 1. So we get p minus 1. And then if we continue in that fashion right here, we're going to have 1 times p to the k is p to the k minus and then when we multiply by 1 over p, we're going to get p to the k minus 1. And so what we actually have here is a telescoping sum, right? Because this 1 and this negative 1 are going to cancel out. 
This next term is going to be p squared minus p, and so that minus p and the, the p cancel out, and so on and so forth, until we get here, this minus p to the k minus 1 is going to cancel out with this term here, and so all we're left with is p to the k. So g of p to the k equals p to the k. So what does this mean? Well, since we know g is multiplicative, um, uh, sorry, not phi, if we had g of n, which is some uh, factor, factor it into primes, and then since all of these prime powers are coprime, we would get, we can use that g of multiplicative. And now, g on each prime power is just going to be the prime power. So we get back n. So g of n is equal to n. So in other words, we get that the sum over the divisors of n of phi of d equals n, which I think is a pretty important and cool result. Now, let's consider one more example of a sum of this type. So again, I'm just going to use g of n as the sum over divisors of n of the Mobius function of d, right, mu of d. And again, we can just say, okay, we know mu of d is multiplicative, and that, therefore g is going to be multiplicative. And we can check, right, that g of 1 equals 1, because it's just going to be mu of 1, which is 1. Okay. So now let's look at g on a prime power. Uh, so first let's consider just g of p, right? So here, obviously, the divisors of p are just going to be 1 and p. So this is going to be mu of 1 plus mu of p. And remember, by the definition of mu, this is going to be 1 minus 1, because p has one distinct prime factor, so that's minus 1. Now let's consider g of p squared, right? We get mu of 1 plus mu of p plus mu of p squared. And in fact, let's just consider uh, a prime power right here, k, where k is greater than 1. So we're going to have these terms here, which are all these prime factors, or these prime powers have exponents greater than 1. Well, remember, mu evaluated on these, these kind of terms, which have uh, a square factor, is just 0. So this is all just 0. And this is 1 minus 1, which is just 0. So this is 0. So what we get is that g, g of n, is going to be 1 if n equals 1 and 0 else, right? It's 0 on all natural numbers except for 1. And all these, this is sort of a trivial uh, multiplicative function. And this actually is going to have a name, so this is going to be um, e of n, uh, actually, I, I forget the name of it. it. It's sort of like a pulse function, right? So if we were to sort of plot it here on the natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. All right, it's 1 here, and then just 0 everywhere else. And so what we're going to see in the next video is we're going to do more operations with sums over divisors, and this function is going to allow us to pick out basically the first term of a sum. So in that case, in that sense, it's sort of like a delta function if you've seen those before. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the next one.